What's going on everybody? So we are here at AWE's facility. We were actually dropping off our Bronco for the Philly Auto Show and figured why not stop by AWE and see Sarah again. And Sarah is actually going to be able to take us on a tour of AWE today. So we're gonna see exactly how you make your exhaust and a couple other things, right? For sure. So we'll give you sort of like a two part. We'll show you exactly how a new product gets made from conception all the way to production. And then the second part is when material comes in the door to when it's made into a full exhaust system and shipped out as well, all in the same spot. So it's kind of cool to take you guys a big loop around. Sounds like a boatload of fun. I'm already loving what I'm seeing here in the lobby. AWE brought out all their Mustangs. So they know we're big Mustang guys down at CJ's. So let's go ahead, hop in the tour and uh, walk through those doors back there and see what AWE has to offer. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna start in the offices and this is a great time to talk about how we start with our new products. Um, so right around here is our marketing department, my department. Um, so when we have an idea for a new product, it comes here to Brandon, who's actually in a meeting right now. Uh, Brandon does all of our research as far as new products go, um, check out what the stock one looks like, if we can improve on it at, at all. And once it gets approved from here, it heads down into our engineering department. So we also do all of our in-house marketing. So photos, videos, install videos, product rundowns, all is done by this team. Um, who are actually working right now, so they're not at our desks. But it's, it's cool that we get to do that in-house. So this is the original sign. Um, AWE stands for Air and Water Enterprises. They started out in air-cooled Porsches, Volkswagens in 1990. Um, so it's been going for a long time and since then obviously expanded into like modern muscle. Truck is huge for us. Um, so we dropped the AWE tuning and now we're just AWE. But that's how it originated. Everyone always asked me what it stands for and it's cool that they have the original sign from the very first building. And speaking of that, if you go over onto this wall. This is cool. Um, really, really humble beginnings. It did start out in essentially a barn. This is the original door for the first building. So we've been American made since uh, 1990 and obviously we've grown since then into this gorgeous facility. But here's a little bit of history. Um, back in 1992, started out again with the Volkswagen Audi um, and then grown since then, like exploding a ton in uh, 2013, 14, um, and to where we are now. So a little, little timeline of the uh, history of the company. This is really kind of cool. cool. A little Easter egg. Yeah, I'm a big <laughs> fan of this. This is super cool. Yep. That's awesome. Got our, our first Mustang system was released in 2017. So we've been doing Mustang for quite a bit now. So I think we got to dial the new. Yeah, dial a little system. bit. Yeah. I'd say so. <laughs> So here starts the fun part. After a product is approved for new product development, it heads back to our engineering and R&D department. And the very first part of that would be the ferro arm that's sitting back there. We get a bone stock vehicle in. We go ahead and scan the underneath of it, scan the stock system so that they can start to design uh, the first initial exhaust path. Everything begins in CAD, and then of course we start with the physical R&D. But we like to get a, a baseline to work off of with our engineering team back there. Now we're going to head out to the floor and see where the product design really picks up in the engineering area and it might get a little bit loud. Oh, the fun stuff. So normally there are more cars on the lifts here. We just so happen to be in a different phase of design. But once we have the general path of how the exhaust should flow, it'll come out here and we'll start with our physical prototyping. So our engineering lifts are all here. Our engineering team will design it on the car. We call it like a quick and dirty system. So they'll kind of just like weld something together to start sound testing. Um, and that's really what starts the R&D process. I know a lot of other companies don't really do as much sound testing as we do. So that's one of my favorite parts of R&D is that we'll continue to develop until we're ready to release. If we're not happy, we'll keep going. Like the um, Mark H GTI was 12 prototypes before oh, wow. we released it. I know it was a, it was a stack. Yeah. We, we were starting to get annoyed there, but seriously, so. Probably sounds um, like a box of them sitting here. <laughs> uh, but once we're actually happy with the prototype, with how it fits, how it sounds, everything, then we head over to our moment of truth, which I'll show you guys in a second. All right, Sarah, so where are we at now? This is the marketing studio area. So we do all of our product photography, like what we have right now in-house. Uh, we do all of our installs, all of our undercar photography, um, rundown, like informational videos, all shot right here. Uh, to sort of help out the customers with a little more info about the exhaust. So another this cool thing we the, do. The magic happens, I guess yeah. you could say. Where I am every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so right. we can go ahead and move on to our dyno area. So at this point, our R&D products will go to the moment of truth. So once we have our final prototype, the last step is testing it. And if we don't show a performance gain, it goes back to the drawing board. That's why it's a little bit uh, high stakes. It's the moment of truth. So what we do here is baseline dyno. 
and then we immediately in the same day it will install our exhaust and dyno it again to show a performance gain. Obviously with newer systems and newer cars we know that we're not going to show a ton of horsepower yeah. but a little bump in power is nice to have and it's a great supporting mod as well. So that's what we're doing here. We're kind of revamping our F-150 line a little bit, a little okay. insider info. So we're starting with a stock dyno with this truck and then we'll put our system on with the improvements and see if we have a little bit of a performance gain there as well. So for example, let's say you put this on the dyno, I don't know what it's going to dyno out at. Let's yeah. just say, for example, I know this number's wrong, 350. Right. If you put your exhaust on it and it doesn't make 351 horsepower, it's instantly like back to the drawing board, we're done with this exhaust. Correct. There's a few systems where we've deemed it to be just sound. I think one or two systems where we offer it and we don't show performance gain. Okay. But everything else, we have the dyno sheets right on the site. And we want it to at least have a little bump in power. Uh, definitely don't want it to lose power. But we do all of our testing every single one of our systems. Even our intakes, we have rapid prototyping capabilities. So we'll do our 3D printed intakes, toss them on here, and test them before we ever go to carbon fiber. That way, we can sort of shorten the time it takes to design an intake. Gotcha. That's yeah. awesome. That's sweet I know. to hear. It's really cool. So now that we looked at how a new product goes through our system, we can look at how an exhaust, if you were to place an order on the website right now, how it moves to the production floor. So we start out with our American Source uh, T304L stainless. It comes in that door right there. And we put it on the racks here. It kind of hangs out just temporarily. And we're always cranking stuff through the production floor. So once we have the material here, the first step is that it gets cut to length and then it heads onto the Crippa. Now the Crippa is a really awesome piece of machinery. We do have a person who runs that, but it could technically bend an exhaust from front to back without any cuts. Obviously you can't ship or install that, but it's kind of neat. That's how we keep the bends really smooth, improve the flow. That's how we make some of that power we were talking gotcha. about earlier. Uh, so we can take a closer look at the Crippa on our way through the prep side of the floor. So once the piece of pipe is cut down to length, deburred, and bent, it heads to the rest of our prep area where it's slotted, expanded, and prepped up to go to weld. So you can see everyone working here. There's a bunch of different styles of prep going on, but everything happens right here on the floor. Are these all jigs? Yeah, so I call them jigs too because that's like the proper name, but they're fixtures. That's what we call them here. What? <laughs> Dude, that's cool. <laughs> that is actually super cool. So once our amazing <laughs> prep team uh, is done prepping the systems, we try to do it, or the pieces, the pick letters, we try to do it in batches. So that's what will sit on a cart here. We grab a fixture that corresponds to the pick letter off of the uh, shelves here, and all of our systems are welded in that fixture. That's how we do the perfect fitment guarantee. And we keep all of our fixtures as well. That way, if we need to check fitment for any reason or God forbid there's a fitment issue, we can bring the piece back, check it, see if there was any issues going on. So really awesome thing that we do here in-house. So behind us, we have one of the machines we have in-house. 90% of what we do is done by a person, but in areas where we need a really precise cut, we have Abby behind me and they do all of the cutting for when we have a really tight merge or anything that we need really, really precision. Abby is, does that. Um, it's still done by a person. And for anybody who doesn't understand that, Abby is a giant plasma cutter that cuts metal on its own, which is pretty cool. <laughs> it's really cool when it's running. Uh, we also have our perf machine behind there, so the interior of some of our resonators are perforated pipe, and that is what makes the perforations. Again, a human does have to run that machine as well. We do almost every single thing in-house, including uh, making some of the brackets. We have a CNC machine. So it starts out as blocks of aluminum, and it'll end up as one of these valve brackets. Uh, if anyone chooses a track edition style system that wants to forego their valves, we include these valve simulator brackets so you don't get a check engine light. And finally, we have our laser etcher. All of our badges are laser etched with our AWE logo and what type of system it is, as well as a serial number. So if you ever have an issue, you can call us up, give us our serial number. We can take a look into it for you. And that's how you know it's authentic AWE product is it will have that badge on it. Always on the driver's side. Of yep, the always on the driver's side. That before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about the little details. Like they yes. really start adding it up and shows exactly why AWE makes such an amazing product. So yeah. uh, where are we moving to next? We're going to check out some welding. Welding. All right, let's do it. 
All right, so once they have a fixture and the pieces that they need to weld in the fixture, it heads into one of our welding booths where one of our welders will actually weld it start to finish in those fixtures. Uh, and that way you get that perfect fitment guarantee that we offer as well. Then once the pieces are actually welded, they head over here to QC where they're inspected before they are put on the shelf, typically only temporarily, and then it heads to shipping. All right, Sarah, I feel like this place is never ending. Where have you brought us now? We're kind of looping through the entire floor. We just stopped at QC where everything gets checked over. We have guidelines that are pieces must pass before they can head to shipping. Uh, but right now we're in the racks where things hang out, our pick letters hang out temporarily before they're picked and packed, and then we'll head into shipping. This is where all of our pieces, our pick letters are picked and put on a cart. It's another opportunity to just take a look at everything, make sure everything looks good. Uh, this is where all the extra pieces like clamps and of course our infamous lollipop gets uh, placed on the cart before it's packed into a box. That's the best part of the package in my opinion. Ah, come on. <laughs> so that's a wrap then for AWE. I wanted to give a big shout out to Sarah for letting us come down here and showing us the entire facility. It was a really cool opportunity to be able to see exactly how the exhausts are made from start to finish. And if you guys want to purchase any of the AWE exhausts, we have multiple options on our website for all Mustang generations and even for Bronco as well too. Yep, and F-150 soon enough. That is true, F-150s, <laughs> there's your sneak peek. You will have some exhaust systems coming out for those soon too, which I'm sure we will definitely see on our channel. Absolutely, and if you guys have any questions about us as a company or about our products, feel free to drop them in the comments. We'll take a look at those and answer them if we can, and thanks so much for watching. Yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. Yeah. Teamwork. <laughs>